Right, so in order to start using Professional Flight Planner X, uh, we have to go to the upper left hand corner and then these tabs are the ones we are going to use uh, with uh, along with these buttons over here are the ones we're going to use to create our our flights as you can see the design is very close to what lately the last windows application looked like especially microsoft well the, the all the microsoft office applications so if you're used to them you should feel quite comfortable with them right the first tab is schedule and actually this is only one this is only used if you're going to flight the same route several times uh, it's like a database with the, your most common scheduled flights but I don't actually use this because I usually only fly um, don't usually fly the same flights over and over again so I prefer just going to the flight tabs now uh, you can also access here but just uh, click in here begin a non-scheduled flight or you can go directly here it's up to you uh, usually because it always PFPX always starts with a schedule tab I rather click here so you have to choose here your airline uh, I'm going to use mine if you remember it's Alpha Lima Sulu and then your flight number I'm going to use my ID number from my airline and now let's fly there are several ways what, where you can choose the the deporter and rival airport uh, so let's because I'm from Spain let's say that I'm going to use Alicante which is my nearest airport and it's Lima equal Alpha Lima you can see here it's in the south in the southeast of Murcia, uh, sorry, in the southeast of Spain, close to Murcia, which is where I'm, where I'm from. And uh, let's say we are going to fly for um, maybe for Rome. Now, if I'm not sure about the um, the ICAO code of Rome, what I can do simply is zoom in, and uh, then I'm going to find here. I've got several airports around around Rome, and I can use. For example, Rome Campan um, sorry, um, Campino, and uh, what I can do is right click here and then use this as the destination. So even if I don't know the, the ICAO code, I can just right click in the map. Uh, and by the way, I'm using the, the, um, the wheel of the mouse. As you can see, it's very convenient because I can just left click and move the map in whatever direction I need and if I use the wheel just with the wheel you can zoom in and out which is absolutely convenient right as if you noticed before if I stop the mouse over the airport I'm going to find all the information needed um, for my for my flight I can see the elevation the length of the runways and I can see even see them what's the 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 metal conditions uh, obviously I told PFPX to use um, uh, FT sky and this is the information it's be using I can also check that it's using FT sky as, as the main source if I go at the bottom here of the um, of the map I can see that my weather source is FT sky I could also use my online connection if you remember this needs a subscription is free for the first year but after the first year you need to subscribe or I can choose and, and change and switch between these two now if I'm going to use um, a large aircraft let's say um, 747 for example I can see that the runway is pretty short for uh, for such a heavy aircraft it's just it's a little over 7,000 feet so I may rather use uh, Fiumicino airport instead so very easy I just need to go right click here again and then click on destination and then it's going to change my route okay so I've accomplished the first step which is setting the um, um, departure and destination now as you can see at the right um, PFPX has already chosen which are the best um, uh, runways according to the wind conditions so we don't need to bother on calculate well we can do that obviously but we don't need to bother on calculating which is the the best uh, landing and, and departure runways because PFPX is going to choose it, it choose it for us but obviously we can just click here and choose whichever of the runways that um, we want to use we may take in the taxi in taxi out uh, time, the, the commercial flight number, the type of flight, and uh, the type of operation, date, and everything that we may need, the standard time of departure, uh, the st um, estimated time of departure, sorry, standard time of departure, estimated time of departure, and then um, the time of arrival, and the estimated time on route. 
Now we need to choose an aircraft, but I haven't got, because I've just installed PFPX, I don't have any aircraft configured it yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here to the aircraft manager. I can also do it here and here. And I'm going to enter into the um, aircraft database. And all, all I have to do is go to uh, create a new new aircraft. Now uh, there are two options. I can create a new aircraft, which includes several models, most of the most common, or I can go to the template. The template goes to um, payware add-ons of high quality and very well-known pay payware add-ons. For example, the Airsoft um, A320, we can go to the uh, Airbus Evolution, the iFly PMDG, and so on and so forth. So because I was, I said that I was going to use a heavy aircraft, let's choose, for example, let's choose the, the PMDG 747. And let's say, for example, the PMDG uh, MD-11, the McDonnell Douglas um, 11, the cargo version. And I'm going to click on Apply. And then it's going to load. The only need, uh, thing I need to set in is the registration. And because it's the MD-11, I'm going to just type the ICAO code of this aircraft. I can choose here what type of aircraft, but obviously because we chose the template, it's already chosen for us. If I hadn't chosen the template, then here in this menu, um, these are all the aircrafts, the model of aircraft available in uh, PFPX. So I, we can see that they are also pretty quite popular aircrafts as the ATR-72, the, the Avro or the, or the BAE, BAE RG-11 or um, 146, several Boeings as you can see, several Cessnas, um, and the Sirius, the Embraer, Fokker, the, the Lockheed and, and McDonnell Douglas and the, um, anyway you can see there are many types. Uh, once I choose the type I can also choose, choose if there are several type of engine available and then okay you can just can I, I won't go into detail one by one. Now this comes an interesting part. Now, as you can see, it's already selected a top cat performance me me module, and we are going to discuss um, in more detail later on um, what this is going to work and what is this going to do. Uh, but if I click here on edit, these are the type of aircrafts that are compatible with top cat. As you can see, the list is more limited here than it was on, on the previous list. For example, it doesn't include the new Boeing uh, 777 um, developed by PMDG, which is one of the most popular aircrafts right now, and it is missing here. And it's one of the of the big missings in in Top Cat. Well, anyway, I'm going to close this. Oh, there's something very interesting if you fly online, and something I was um, I've been always very confused about is there about the equipment configurations. Now you'll be you'll be glad to know that um, in the equipment configuration you can key set. Which the which are the um, the instruments that are available in your aircraft? Um, and as you can see, most of them are well, all of them are selected by default. If you're using the template, uh, obviously you can also select and deselect some of them. And <coughs> sorry, you can also complete, for example, um, the the PVN. Um, option which is very very confusing for most of us well you've got it here already the same as the, the nav option for your online flight plans and then if your aircraft is etops e um, approved here you can check the the range and you can even add uh, more ranges if necessary for example the new triple seven um uh, by pmdg um it's certificate well, i can't remember the time i think it was 320 minutes the last certification it got but it's not included here by default so if, if you are making a very long um oceanic flight you may need to include um uh, a biggest etops scenery and then then by the default i'm not going to save the changes ah sorry i do need to save the changes so again uh, i'm going to go to the M md11 cargo i'm going to apply and i'm going to write the registration well you can also check the type of aircraft uh, anyway so i'm going to save the aircraft and this is ready. I'm going to apply. And right now, as you can see, it has been selected by default. Now, you may have noticed that um, this was this dot here was in red color, which means that it's a compulsory field that you um, is drawing your attention because you need to complete that. Uh, for example, here you can see that right now 
all are in uh, the red al alternates is mm, telling me that I do need to include alternate. Right, the next section, which is hidden by default, which is, which is the payload, I can choose how many, um, how many um, passengers we are going to have, and also the cargo. In this flight, as I told you, I'm using a cargo flight, so no passengers here. And if you go, there's a very convenient option here at the top, uh, where I can choose no passengers at all and no cargo, maximum payload, including passengers and cargo, or the option that I always use, I like to use, which is random, which is obviously the, the closest to the what the real life um, cargo would be. And as you can see, PFPX is smart enough as to know that I've chosen a cargo flight, a uh, cargo plane. So it hasn't included, if you can see the max packs, the, the number maximum number of passengers is zero. So I haven't got any. And here I've got all the payload. Now, as you can see also, this point was in grey before, and now because I've just completed all the information, it comes up, uh, now it comes as uh, green. Right, and finally, the last one, well, the last two parts, obviously, I also need the route. Now, there are two ways to fill in the route. I can go here and click um, Quick Find Route, and it's going to create a new flight route, and it's, it's impossible to make an easier way to create um, a route. Now, what I found is that sometimes um, the the quick find route is not exactly the one that I would choose. So what I make most of the time is just clear the route and choose this one, f this find option instead. And I find, uh, I, I couldn't tell you exactly why, but I tend to use the find option here instead of the quick find route because I, um, sometimes it's the same. I mean, sometimes you wouldn't find any kind of difference, but this is the one I like to use. And as you can see, there's also a very convenient feature of PFPX is that it already adds the seed and star, um, the standard instrument departure. And ah, I can't remember what star stands for. Standard arriving, I, the standard arrival. I can't remember what it actually stands for. But as you can see, it's already chosen according to the wrong ways that uh, we were chosen here. But obviously, we can change this uh, in any way we want. And that's exactly what, well, no, I'm going to choose, um, I'm going to leave the, the route modification for another video. I'm not going to mix up many things here. I'm just, I'm going to focus on the, on the basics here. And then I will make a third video talking about the details of how to change and um, personal and customize the, the, the route created. And now the last step is finding the alternates. And that couldn't be easier. As you can see, I only need to click on find destination alternates. And here I've got four different destination alternates um, automatically created for me and um, at very close distance, distance uh, from my airport, including the route from the airport or destination to the uh, alternate airport. And as you can see, I also have got all the runways included. I'm going to delete my flight and start all over again so that you can check something which is interesting. I'm going to check on reset. Uh, no, sorry, it's a new. Yeah, begin new flight plan, and now. As you can see, I, I'm going to show you how quickly you can create your route. Uh, I'm going to put my flight number, which is optional, by the way, and... Uh, sorry about the phone. So you just click on the, on the code, and look here, I forgot to tell you before, I've got the random payload here directly. So um, here, as you can see, you always got the next step, quick found route and find destination alternates. If, if you are comfortable, comfortable with this, you don't need to mess with anything at all. You just click, 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 and you've got, oh, sorry, and you've got your complete, um, your complete um, flight prepare. Now, the last step is compute the flight. Now, with this information, take into account the load, um, the load of the of the aircraft, cargo, or, or pay all the payload on passengers, taking in into account the weather, the distance, the route, everything, it's going to com finally compute all the details of the flight. Uh, I'm going to delete because it's the same, I think. Right, now, this is the result. This is what we got, with, and this is the summary of the flight we've just created. Now, if we go, if we go to the Details tab, 
we've got some um, a summary of our flight but we've got all this information and much more on the flight plan which is what we are actually interested in and I'm, we are going to spend some time here because there's a lot of information as you can see can be quite intimidating at first sight the very first time that you see this but it actually if you go step by step it's not that complicated and once you are used to to this flight plan and then your eyes go directly where you need to look for and and I can guarantee you that it's very convenient, very easy and, and, and just great. Right, so we've got this, that this is a flight plan for Air Al-Andalus. Uh, it's an I IFR flight um, for me, in my case, uh, using an MD-11 for and this is the departure and destination. Um, it shows that all the weights are in pounds and not in kilograms. This is very important because sometimes you can, if you are messing between different aircraft, for example, uh, I rather prefer kilos than, than pounds. So for most of my aircrafts, I usually I use kilograms, but in some of them I switch to pounds and it's very important to have a look at this so you are sure you are loading the, the right amount of, of fuel and, and making the right calculations for for all your your um, speed references and everything. Now the the date and the time, and um, well we we've got the departure, the the um, ICAO and the and the um, name of the of the airport, the runway. We've got the elevation. Now we've got the cruise um, the cruise altitude. The mode is long range cruise. Um, there are two options, and the other one is maximum range cruise. But I don't actually use this function, and I couldn't tell you much more about this. Now, the initial altitude in this case, we see the, the flight level is 380, and uh, which is probably the highest we are going to get. Sometimes we've got um, because of the of the standard instrument departure, you, we may have some initial altitude cropping or limitation and you will see here which is the first initial altitude but in this case we are going to go up uh, through flight level 380 uh, now this is the the, the change in the fuel consumption depending of the of the aircraft you've chosen now this is the distance um, uh, the different kind of distances depending if you count just straight on the map or if you include um, if you include um, the um, the ascending and the descending uh, obviously you include if you include that uh, curve uh, going up and going down the distance is going to increase and but i don't usually make pay a lot of attention to this but for example the last point I it is more important which is the average wind component uh, which is going to help you to know um, if you're going to have in this case uh, i'm going to have a tailwind which is favorable and obviously it's going to make um, uh, burn less fuel and get to the destination quicker now, um, here we've got what is the alt uh, from all the alternates uh, is going to choose the, which is the closest, and um, we've got here the alternate airport with the air uh, with the um, runway, the elevation, and the distance from our destination airport. Now, from our standard configuration, we've got. Um, a dry operating weight of our aircraft is. Um, well, this is in, in pounds or so 25, um, 250, almost. 251,000 pounds and uh, we have no um, no passengers but we've got uh, 111,000 um, pounds of cargo and that's about the total obviously because we don't have passengers that are the same as the total um, the useful load this is the, the useful load that we can um, have in the aircraft and then we've got some information this is the maximum that the aircraft is able of uh, getting and this is our Takeoff weight, uh, as we can see, our takeoff weight is uh, far below um, the the. Sorry, this this is the zero, the maximum zero fuel weight, and this is our planned uh, zero fuel weight. As we can see, we are quite below the 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 maximum, the same as the takeoff weight. Uh, we are well way below the our maximum takeoff weight, so we are quite safe on that. The same with the landing weight. The maximum landing weight is almost uh, five five hundred thousand pounds and we are also quite safe on, on our landing weights now this is um, to count for how much fuel we're going to use for this is the fuel we are going to need for the trip which this amount of fuel translates into uh, roughly an hour and a half um, of flight time 
now if we ha add up the, the um, mandatory 5% con uh, contingency fuel by the EKO rules, if you use all the type of rules, this amount may vary. Um, now, this is the fuel necessary to get to our alternate airports. Um, this is the minimum fuel reserve that we should get once we arrive at the airport. This is um, also a compulsory uh, reserve for half an hour flight. Now, if we are going to keep on hold, uh, we are going to need this other amount of fuel, which uh, translates into 45 minutes. If you remember, I included that uh, information that time uh, by hand. Uh, now, so this is the minimum takeoff weight, but we haven't added any extra weight. But we have it. Uh, we've sorry added some weight, uh, some fuel for our taxi, and uh, the minimum takeoff weight plus our taxi weight that give us the total amount of fuel we've got to load on our flight, which in this case uh, is forty eight thousand um, forty eight thousand seven hundred and thirty uh, pounds. Of fuel, and that should give us um, almost three hour and and a half of flight time. Obviously, you don't need to sign. This is just for making it more real. Uh, mo most of the times, I don't even print this. I just well, uh, I've got two screens, two monitors, and I always have this information in digital format, so I don't print it. Now. So we've got here all the um, all the capacities of our fuel tank, of our fuel tank. Sorry, and um, I haven't figured out what this line means. Um, I have to say the truth. I don't use it. Maybe I'm doing something very wrong. But uh, the truth is, I, I don't know. Here we've got the estimated time, estimated en route time, which is the the time we should be takes for our trip, which is exactly the same as you can see as the trip here. So as I, as I told you, I don't usually pay much attention to this, 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 uh, sorry, these three lines over here. Now, I guess these are the climb speeds, um, 250 knots and 330 knots, but I don't actually know what this 82 means and the same for the descent. So I don't have, as I told you, I don't usually have a look at these three lines. Now, if you um, are um, conscious and you are worried about the, the times, for example, I usually fly with um, using uh, in my virtual airline. I usually I usually fly with FS Airlines. Now, FS Airlines, you need to set your times correctly of the departure and arrival. So, if you pay attention to this, you should be a patient. Uh, sorry, to, should be paying attention to your uh, estimated times of departure and estimated times of uh, arrivals. Otherwise, this is not that that important. Uh, the same, your estimated time of takeoff, take into account the taxi time, and your estimated time of landing, take, take into account your taxi time as well. Now, you th this is your ATC route, and as you can see, this is more complex than than this uh, route is more complex than the one if you b go back here to your flight plan, and if you go back here to your route. You can see you've got your your seed, your standard instrument departure, your standard um, arrival, your star, and you, as you can see in the format in the flight plan format we chose, we've got first we get into into fixed point mythos, then there we take the um, airway unicorn November eight five one until the waypoint. Um, India Zulu Alpha, and there we take the airway uniform November 856, and so on and so forth. But if you have a look here at your um, ATC route, it's much more complex because it adds some information, for example, about the, the speed. Uh, our first speed would be 470, 4, um, 476 knots and not of indicated airpiece air speed, but uh, of, of um, true, um, true speed. And the first uh, clearance would be flight level 380, as we saw before, using our departure um, METO 2A in first waypoint in METOs, and then the rest is going to be the same. Now, until we get here, uh, then once once we get to the um, to the Papatango Charlie waypoint, then at this point waypoint, which should be 
at uh, 475 knots and then as we saw yes we're going to climb uh, higher to flight level 400 so as we saw before uh, we have our initial altitude of 380 but once we get to this um, to this waypoint, we are going to go up until uh, flight level 400 and then we continue our route until our arrival. Now we've got here the information about our alternate planning and this is going in, in order to check that we are um, uh, getting our times right and our fuel consumption right. So if we take, for example, the, um, the Ibiza waypoint in the Azul Alpha here, we see that um, we should be here at um i can't remember what mt stands for but it's the um, our bearing our we are flying uh, heading 069 then we are going to get uh, we're going to fly at a flight level of 380 and the air temperature is estimated in minus 58 degrees uh, we've got here the the wind component and we've got the frequency of um, this should be a VOR, sorry, an NDV. This is an NDV, and this is the frequency of, of um, Ibiza NDV. Uh, the true airspeed is going to be 475 knots, and the ground speed is going to be 400, uh, 493 knots. Um, we've run 15. Um, we've got we've run 15 miles since the previous waypoint, which actually is the top of climb, and you can see here and we've still got remaining 575 knots to our destination if we see um our fuel uh our fuel remaining is uh, 38 um thousand pounds and our, we have used so far 10,000 pounds and this is the uh, our coordinates for the gps or ins coordinates of this waypoint now um this is the um, the leg the part of of leg number two and um, and this is the time um sorry this is the sorry these are the minutes between this leg and this leg uh, as you can see the 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 leg um the distance remaining for the next leg as we can see here is 15 15 miles and and the previous from the top of climb the next distance was um 25 miles for the next one so we could we should cover this uh 25 miles in two minutes and uh, the time spent uh, since we left the airport should be 15 minutes so as you can see we can go and check and sorry and um and here at the at the bottom if you print this flight plan then then you can write uh, what uh, what is the actual time that um, you've needed to cross this, uh, to cross all these all these points? So you can note here any difference between what you're supposed to and and the the real information. And then finally, if you go at the bottom, you've got here some information about the weather. Uh, as you can see, during the climb, these are this is the wind components and the temperature at the different altitudes as as you go um, in your flight plan. Now, as, as we saw before, um, this is the ATC route in the format that we should send to the ATC. And actually, if we go to the next tab, ATC, this is the like what a real flight plan should look like. As you can see, this is much more different than than just entering, as you can see here, as you entering the route. Uh, if, if you fly online and you send the flight plan, this is what um, a real uh, flight plan should look like. Now, this is the flight plan. Uh, for my flight using uh, my aircraft this is the if you remember um, that uh, when we saw the um, the the plane characteristics uh, and the, the equipment here uh, we're going to edit if you remember when we went to the equipment configuration code here depending on of the of the what equipment we chose um, for box 10a this is 10 bo box 10a and as you can see this is all the information that we wrote now um, you can see this is our departure and time of departure this is all our route this is our arrival and this is more information about our um, uh, the our equipment um, this is the date and the registration estimated times and so on and so forth and um, finally we want we want more information about the, about the weather here yeah, we've got here all the information all the the matters of origin destination and if there is any 
uh, note to Hermans, we are going to find it here. Now, if we click on release, it's not necessary, but uh, as I told you before, on the first tab of the uh, schedules uh, we've got there, flies that we're going to repeat over over and over again and we, we chose release then this flight is going to as you can see is going to be added up uh, as a scheduled flight with all our standard times of arrival departure and this information so in the next time when you fly this flight we only have to get into here and change maybe the all the passengers and everything and but the rest should be more or less the same there should be the same aircraft same times and so on and so forth now there are some more options, as I told you, but I'm not going to get into these details now in this video. I'm going to cover them on, on, on the next video. Um, um, so usually, if you get to this point, you uh, may do two things. If you um, don't have the TopCat, if you uh, haven't bought the TopCat um, application, if you remember, we talked about that before, when when preparing the aircraft and also when describing the, um, the PFPX and, and bot and everything. Now, uh, we may use this, but if you don't have TopCat, then um, you should go to the export function and there you can save your, your flight plan to a wide range of, of different scenarios. For example, the most common would be a, flight, a default flight plan for FSX. So the first thing you need to do here is to set where FSX is installed in your computer. In my case, it's in the C drive in the FSX uh, folder. So right now it's going to find automatically where my documents are and where my FSX is. Now, depending on the aircraft that you've loaded, you've got here a selection. For example, I use Flight Sim Commander, so I always check Flight Sim Con Commander. I always export as the uh, Microsoft Flight X flight plan. And also because I'm going to use, uh, if you remember, I chose the MD-11. I'm using the MD-11 from PMDG, so I'm also interested in exporting it, um, exporting uh, mine to uh, a PMDG. As you can see, I've got here another tab which is favorites. So if I don't want to be here clicking, um, I may ins uh, include some for maybe not using write them uh, right now, but I may be interested in choosing some other kind of exporting, maybe qualities, quality wings. So they are here in my favorites. So I can go here to favorites and I just may click or unclick, but instead of having them all. So the only thing I should do now is to click on save. Uh, sorry, because I haven't uh, set where the folders are. So I need to go here to Flight Sim Commander. All right. Uh, let's. Ah, here. Sorry, browse. If you go here to the to the upper part, browse, and then you choose where. As I told you once again, I've got my add-ons in the e FSX add-on, FSX add-ons, FFC. Flight Sync Commander, Flight Plans, and I think there it is. Right, I'm going to click on Save again, and I've got another error. Well, right now I don't have installed, to say the truth, I don't have installed the PMDG. So uh, this folder doesn't exist. That's why it says it can write to it, because this folder is not in 6 and So I'm just going to save on the, on the Flight Sync Commander, um, Flight Simulator X. So as I said, it's you, if you don't have TopCat installed, this is the end. You can now fly your route, but we are going to see one last step. Um, no, I'm going to include this information in the next video because it's for more advanced users. So I'm going to leave uh, this here. Um, I do hope this information is useful for you so that you can start using PFPX. There's much more to offer but we're going to see that in the next video. So far, if you it's the very first time that you're using PF, um, PX, maybe you would like to try before coming to the next video, but anyway, you're welcome, and I'll be there.